My name is Jeff Sullivan and I'm with Optum Technical Enablement. I'm going to talk about performance policies and politics. What are the motives to performance? What are typical performance issues? What are the performance strategies? My hope is that you will have a better perspective and understanding of the performance issues and those political environments surrounding putting in performance tools from our customer's perspective. From management's perspective, intelligent monitoring means having the ability to look at the environment, make projections on growth, and plan for any future projects. But the one thing that management puts above everything else, though, is spending and watching costs. This is the motivation. If a manager can delay an upgrade or new server build-out to the following January, when the budget is determined for the following year, he won't look like he didn't plan for a given project to his boss or director. Intelligent monitoring for an IT manager therefore means making a good estimate on how much the overall environment will grow and finding the issues to resolution such that he could postpone the next upgrade. From a DBA perspective, the average DBA's only concern is making sure he keeps the problems at a minimum and to keep his phone from ringing. The one thing he doesn't want to hear about is a problem from his boss because that means he will get slammed on his next performance review. Intelligent monitoring to a DBA, therefore, means faster mean time to problem, problem resolution and getting to that problem faster than having the users complaining to the manager. A DBA does not sit and watch an overview for the problem. There are just too many issues to have time to do stuff like that. Rather, they monitor by setting up rules and thresholds. But many DB2 for LUW shops start small, so in many shops, there will not be any monitoring by rules, for that matter, any monitoring whatsoever, and the monitoring that does take place is usually reactive. But if you ask the average DBA, you would probably get a response of, yeah, you bet, we'd sure like to be able to monitor by rules and use a rules-based monitoring system. Let the system tell me when we are having problems. So to recap what intelligent monitoring means to a DBA, we'd like to be able to monitor by rules and having the ability to respond quickly to the problems when they happen. Now taking into, of course, what the, uh, the manager would like to have from his definition of intelligent monitoring, we have the third bullet point, and that is being able to plan for that next instance, application, or growth issue. Switching gears slightly, the basic rules of performance tuning. Uh, there are four rules, and uh, there is a, a white paper that I would highly recommend, which is called the Best Practices Tuning and Monitoring Database for System Performance. The website is seen on this foil. The first is, though, be prepared. Try to understand how the system performs when all is well. Collect operational monitoring data and track those changes to behavior over time. Secondly, understanding the whole picture. Do not limit yourself to looking only into the DB2 database. Rather, collect and analyze data that is coming from the operating system, storage, the application, and also from users. Understanding the nature of the system helps you to interpret the monitoring data. This also includes understanding the cause, effect, and interrelationships of all observations. Is this new SQL, or is this one-off SQL? Is this a new steady state, or is this an anomaly that I'm looking at? In one-off SQL, we could possibly get a table space scan, and it could be manifested in increased I.O. We could have lower reads to pages read ratio. We could have lower buffer pool hit ratios. We could have spike indications surrounding the buffer pool issues. And we could also have effect of, of having its effect on other S, uh, shared SQL within the same buffer pool. Fourth, only two things we can explain the symptoms you are seeing. Don't change the tire if the engine won't start. Don't try to fix a disk bottleneck by tuning if you're reduced, trying to reduce CPU consumption. Changes or changing one thing at a time. You only want to observe the effects before changing anything else. Performance bottlenecks do not usually happen on systems that are adequately unit tested, system tested, shakedown tested, integrated tested. Bottlenecks usually do not happen on a well-tuned DB2 system or database management system. When the bottlenecks do happen, DBAs usually ask, 
course, after their initial indignation on why it's their problem to fix, they'll usually ask, is this a one-off situation or is this a new steady state? Now, if it is a new steady state, there are three possibilities to this. That is, we could have new work entering the system altogether. This is a new application or perhaps a change to an existing application. And the bottleneck encountered was not adequately tested for or accounted for. Another possibility is existing work has increased over time, which is throwing the usage over the line on being able to meet your SLAs and SLOs. Finally, there is what I refer to as the DBA misstep or DBA asleep at the wheel. In all cases, the goal for DBA is to react, is to react accordingly. If it is a one-off situation, then it might be something as simple as doing absolutely nothing other than putting in the appropriate checks and balances to prevent it from happening again. Perhaps removing or revoking authority to a table, putting in a non-IT related uh, change such as putting a change ticket in for those one-off SQL situations. Or it could be locking down production tables, making a shadow query table, which won't affect production, and so on. So drilling in on this, the, these three areas, let's look first at the new steady state work that is the new work that hits the system. New work enters the system either by a new application or in addition to an existing application. And the bottleneck encountered was not adequately tested for or accounted for. We could see this in new SQL where it worked fine in test and QA, but it didn't, does not work well in production. This is a case where the the test and QA systems are not sized in accordance to the same sizes we see in production. Uh, it could also be the new SQL is fine, but due to inadequate maintenance, the, the tables that they're going against, those tables are not properly tuned. This is just kind of a restatement of the first one, but in slightly different uh, It could be bad SQL basically because of the failure to commit. Or it could be that we are not collecting adequate column statistics. It could also be scanning tables inadvertently. And, and this is a case where we might want to uh, consider adding an index on. This is kind of like a boil the ocean technique. And the fourth one is, is old school thinking. And this is where you would have a select statement which would be gathering certain columns, another select statement gathering another set of columns, and programmatically doing things such as uh, uh, matching off data. This all can be handled in the same SQL. The thing I usually say here is, is that this is not your father.